morning, everyone. It's a good time of worship as we've opened up our heart and mind to the Lord and to realize that Jesus, He has found us right where we're at. That's good news, isn't it? I'm so thankful for grace and peace that He gives to us, so thankful for the message of hope that we're able to serve Him with. And today, I believe God wants to do something incredible for your life. He's doing it for me, and it feels really good to know that God has a great plan that's beyond this world. It's more than what we ever understand, but God has a great plan for our lives, and I'm so thankful. Do you believe that for your life today as well? The fact that Jesus found us, He has something new for us. He has something new for you, and my prayer is this, that when we leave this service today, that we'll have not only the testimony that's going to be given through baptism, we have some who are going to be baptized at the close of the service, uh, the new life that God brings to uh, each one of us, but He wants to do that for your life and for mine as well. In Mark chapter 16, we're looking at um, the final days right there. Jesus is now uh, resurrected. The, the, the disciples are struggling with this whole message, but um, what's incredible is, one by one, and as a small group from a small group, they begin to have their eyes opened. And I believe God wants to do that for our lives, for our eyes to be open, for us to live by faith. Thank you, folks. Good work, okay? We're going to look at this in just a moment. But God wants to do that for us. Last week, if you remember, we looked at Peter and we looked at Judas. We looked at two disciples who had betrayed Jesus. I mean, the unthinkable happened. And Peter is like, no, it will never be me. I will never deny you. But we know that before the rooster crowed, that Peter had denied Christ. And what's interesting is both disciples, they run, but the difference between one and the other is that one ran not away from Jesus, but he ran to Jesus. And I want you to understand, as we've understood this from the past, as we've looked at the Gospel of Mark, and this is going to be uh, our final message in the, this series, I can't say that we've completed the book of Mark. I could go clear back to chapter 1 and preach another 10 weeks on it and just uh, begin to touch the iceberg of what really God has in store to speak to us. But the entire book has been about transformed lives. And Peter, when he ran back, he ran back to the church, he ran back to the disciples, and his life was transformed. And today I remind you, if you find yourself wayward or you've gone down a path that you're not proud of, good news for you. You have opportunity to run back to the arms of Jesus. You have opportunity to realize that you can live life by faith, not being defeated in the defeat of this life. But you can live life knowing that today is a brand new day. I'm so thankful that we were lost, but Jesus found us. And we all need to say amen to that. So take your Bibles, turn to... Mark chapter 16 will be the passage we look at, and, um, and I believe God wants to speak to us in a very real way as we look at the different responses that the disciples, the people close to Jesus had about the news of, uh, of his resurrection. What we're talking about today is really about faith, living life by faith. The disciples, I mean, we could just unpack it. They really struggled with this whole faith thing. They didn't believe that Jesus had been resurrected. They didn't believe the, the message that Mary came back and told them that the two that were on the road of Emmaus, they didn't believe this because they were living life with their understanding. We understand that because all we know is that sometimes when we hear those far-fetched stories, it's like, whoa, <laughs> I don't know if I quite believe that. It's not really possible. Well, that's what they were going through. They didn't think it was possible, but when they finally understood, and when they got to experience Jesus, you see, Jesus makes the difference. When we experience Jesus in our life, no one can take that testimony away from us. We can't explain it to everyone, but when we experience Jesus Christ in our heart of hearts, we know that He is alive, that He is seated at the right hand of God, and that we do serve a risen Savior. And that's where the disciples eventually get to, but it took some time because they had unbelief in their life. If you know of anyone, and it may be that person that you're looking at in the mirror today that has unbelief, you can't really understand that God has a great hope and a future for your life, I want you to listen up today. Begin to live life by faith. Hebrews 11.6 says it's impossible to please God without faith. Folks, it's impossible. We need to live life by faith, trusting Him in the tomorrows so that we can live life today. And understand that God has great plans for our life. So we're going to talk about belief versus unbelief. How do we see tomorrow 
from today's perspective. Well, this week is Thanksgiving, and I uh, trust you're going to be able to be with family. If you aren't going to be with family, let's find some other family you can be with and come join. Don't spend this week alone. It's always a fun time to gather together. I have great memories of my family. My grandparents lived just a half mile south from where we lived. And although I got to be there on a regular basis, we still took advantage of special holiday time to have those special events. Grandma would usually have the turkey, but she always had a ham. And boy, my memory of that ham was the best ever. It would just fall apart. She would have the best peanut brittle at Christmas time. I don't know if I've ever tasted peanut brittle quite like grandma's. You've got those memories, don't you, of your grandparents? She made pickles. Grandma would take dill pickles, just store-bought dill pickles. She would take them out. She would chunk them up like half-inch, inch-sized chunks. And then she would cook that pickle juice that they had been in and put sweetener with it, sugar with it, and then pour it back over those pickles. Oh, man, I can taste it right now. Those are memories that I have of going to my grandparents' house at holiday times. We'd eat that bowl of pickles before dinner started. It was like the appetizer. And uh, uh, we still have those pickles. My mom makes them. We sometimes make them. Now, with the, I think there's 38 that goes to my folks' house with all the grandkids and great-grandkids and all. And um, now they divvy them out. Everybody gets two pickles. and uh, <laughs> Like two chunks. Not whole pickles, but two chunks. And uh, if you don't get your chunks, you're going around saying, okay, who stole the pickles? And uh, what great memories. We'd play games at Grandma and Grandpa's. They had this card game called Racco. Uh, it was a card game you'd, you'd put in numerical order from the least to the greatest. And if you got those in order, the first one to get them in order, uh, you'd say, Racco, and you'd win the game. Any of you played Racco before? Oh, thank you for that hand. I don't feel quite so... Well, some of you are older than I am and you haven't played. Oh, thank you. That's good. Um, they'd always have uh, uh, the ball game on, you know, on Thanksgiving Day. It was on that piece of furniture that was called a TV. It was like a console. And it had like a list of a row of buttons you'd push. You'd push a button for the next channel, although we only needed the top three buttons because that's the only channels we could get. But we'd watch the game. They'd usually have a card table. And it seemed like when the uh, weather started getting cold, they'd start doing puzzles in the house. And uh, so we'd go to Grandma and Grandpa's and usually be a puzzle and sometimes two card tables with puzzles on them. And, and so uh, uh, we'd go there and, you know, just to kind of pass the time, you'd sit down and help with the puzzle pieces and, um, and lots of fond memories there. I, I, I was thinking about this this week and thinking about those memories and thinking about applying today's message to our lives and some lessons that we could learn. And the Lord just kind of reminded me that life is somewhat like a puzzle. And um, we don't quite understand where all of the pieces go. Sometimes we try to force pieces into place, but it doesn't work. And so when you sit down to do a puzzle, oftentimes what you do, the very first thing is you find all the pieces with a straight edge. You find the corner pieces and you put the, the parameter together, don't you? The that you kind of make a frame of the puzzle. And folks, that's a good lesson. We could apply lessons of the puzzle. You didn't come here to learn about puzzles, but that's a good, good lesson. We need some parameters in our life. Next thing you often do is you take the, cut the pieces and you begin to categorize them by colors. And today on the table here, I've got, I've got the, the dark pieces together. I've got this color piece together. I've got some here. It's, I, I don't know, it's like a train set or something. I've got some pieces like this together. I've categorized. And sometimes we need to do that in life in order to get through the things in life. We know that there's chapters in life. There's situations that we need to handle. We need to take care of that. We move on to the next. And we work it all together. That's how the puzzle works. And lots of lessons we can learn. And I want you to learn as we look at God's Word that life is somewhat like a puzzle. But the lesson that you need to understand that I'm trying to understand myself is that in order for this puzzle to be completed, I mean really, in fact I thought about doing a, a little illustration today. I would have to use a time lapse camera. I thought about getting a group of you on one side that you had taken and put the puzzle together and you'd, you'd work it all together. But on that piece, I would not give you the top of the box. You wouldn't be able to see the completed picture of what it would look like. And I wonder how long would it take for you to put that piece, that puzzle together. On the other side, I thought about giving you the same puzzle. You'd do the same work, but you would have the picture. You would have the top of the box. You'd see what the completed picture was going to look like. Let me ask you, which side do you think would complete it the quickest? The one that was able to see the picture. 
the completed picture. And the reason that you're able to complete that puzzle the quickest, if you could see the picture, is because you have a goal, you have the end in mind. You see what the completeness looks like. Grandma and grandpas, I was tempted <laughs> to take a piece from that puzzle and trade it with a piece with this puzzle. <laughs> Can't tell you if I ever did that. Um, confession would be good for the soul, but I'm not telling you a thing. Um, with the frustration that sometimes that would bring. And there's a lot of people living frustrated lives in today's society. And it may be you, maybe a person that you love dearly, maybe a person that this Thanksgiving week or Christmas month that you'd have opportunity to be with and you'd be able to share the love of Christ with them. Raise your hand up if you have someone in your life, maybe a loved one that they need to draw closer to Jesus. Does anyone have someone like that? Mm, me too. And I believe God wants to speak to your life today so that you are reminded. I mean, really, that life is kind of like a puzzle. But when we try to fit the wrong pieces into our life's puzzle, it will not work. There's lots of frustration. You can try as hard as you may. But it's not going to work if you try to fit the wrong pieces of life into your life's puzzle. And that's why Jesus says, stay away from the danger zone. Stay away from sin in our life. We think sin is fun for a season, and it probably is. But folks, it's not going to bring the long-term joy. It's not going to bring the peace that takes us beyond the living for the now so that we can live for the then. We've got to keep our eyes upon the then in order to live by faith in the now. There's a passage of Scripture that I want us to look at before we get to Mark chapter 16, and the Apostle Paul is writing this and um, helps us to begin to understand that, um, that even when the puzzle pieces are not easy, we don't understand all of that. When we don't know if they're quite going to fit, some puzzle pieces don't fit in life and probably they shouldn't be fitting in your life. Some come easy, some don't. And today I want to remind you, family, rather than trying to force your own way of living, living for the here, the now, God has a better plan for your life. And He wants to take the pieces of your life and He wants to put them together and He wants to see the complete picture completed in your life. Young people, listen up. Old folks, <laughs> listen up. It's for all of us. Here's what Paul says. In, in a great chapter that I often read either during a wedding ceremony or when we talk about love, he talks about love being complete, you know, faith, joy, love, all of this that he has. But he speaks a, a word here that I want to remind you of, and then we'll get to the text today. But verse 12 of 13, 1 Corinthians, now, he says, we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then, he says, we will see everything with perfect clarity. He says, all I know is that now is partial and incomplete. Now is kind of like this piece of the puzzle. It's not complete. We live life in the now. It's partial. It's incomplete. But he says, one day, folks, we are going to be able to live life in the then when we begin to see everything completely and know it just as God knows me completely. And so do you catch those words? Paul is saying, okay, now, now life is not complete. We don't see the clarity of it. But there is a time when we can live life then, when we see the completeness of life. And when we think about that, it really applies to every area. I mean, so many times we get so dismayed by the now of living. Whether a job loss comes our way or a financial crisis comes our way and we have all the fragments of life, we don't understand how the pieces are going to come together. It's incomplete. We don't see it. But folks, in those hard times, you've got to keep your eyes upon the then of living. The then of completeness. You see, God has a complete picture for your life. But if we focus upon the now, where we see things in not clear, where it's partial, where it's incomplete, you're going to be dismayed. I'm dismayed. I'm overwhelmed when I live in the now, when it's not complete. But when I keep my eyes upon the future, upon the then, and then I begin to make sense out of the now. And so whether it's a job loss or a wayward child or financial or health crisis, 
We say, God, why are you allowing this to happen to me? That's the incompleteness. That's the living in the now. When in reality, God says you can make it through the now if you'll keep your eyes upon the then, the then of completeness, where you will know everything completely just as God knows your life. And when you keep your eyes upon the then, upon the goal, you're able to look back upon the times and say, okay, God, I didn't quite understand that. Don't know why I had to go through that situation. But now I am able to see that it is complete and that you did work all things together for my good. I am who I am today because of that struggle that I went through. It wasn't easy, but all I know is that I'm keeping my eyes upon the then of the completeness. That's what God has in store, to keep our eyes upon the then of completeness. And in essence, that's living by faith, trusting God now for the then living by faith, and that's what the disciples were struggling with in this final chapter of Mark 16. They're struggling living by faith. All of the news, the reports are coming their way. I mean, the women who find that empty tomb, they're like, no way, can't be. We don't know how that's possible because they were living in the now of understanding. It was not complete. But Jesus had a greater thing in store for their lives and family. He has a greater... future in store for our lives if we could keep our eyes upon the then of living. Mark 16, verse 9. When Jesus arose early on that first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. Can I just pause for a moment? Say, you realize who was the first one to, to experience Jesus Christ resurrected? It was a a woman. I think we ought to give a shout out to the ladies today. Oftentimes it's the ladies who lead us in faith. And I mean that. And I thank you for that. Another account, and a little earlier in this one, it says that, I mean, Saturday night, Mary had prepared, she'd gotten the spices together so that she could go anoint Jesus' body. All she knew is that she loved the Lord. Jesus had forgiven her of so much. If you think that you've done something that God can't forgive you of, I wish you could meet Mary Magdalene. I mean, she had so much sin in her life, but Jesus still forgave her, and Jesus wants to forgive no matter what is in your life or in your family member's life. And Mary, she's the one who went early that first day of the week, and Jesus, she encounters the living Christ. (laughs) So verse 10, she went and told those who had been those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. I want to pause there for a moment also. I mean, if you were to hear good news, what should be a part of your life? Joy, happiness, wow, woo! (laughs) But instead, she finds disciples mourning and weeping. And the reason they were mourning and weeping, because they had not experienced the living Christ. Really. Really. They were living in the now of the moment. Things were not complete. They didn't understand it all. How could this be? They'd put their faith in him. And he was in the tomb. The now of unbelief. But when Mary Magdalene told him, as much as they should have been with joy, they were mourning and weeping. There's a lot of people with mourning and weeping in their life. They thought that whatever path they were going to go down was going to bring happiness to their lives. Well, guess what? It didn't. And now broken pieces, they're trying to pick up. There's mourning and weeping in their life, in the now of the moment. Folks, I have good news for you. We can live now, keeping then in mind. And Jesus can take the broken pieces of life. That's what he did for Mary Magdalene, and that's what he wants to do for you. He wants to take the broken pieces and make beautiful things out of your life. Verse 11, when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, you would think they should have believed, but guess what? They did not. They were living in the now of Jesus being hung upon the cross. The now of him being in the tomb, and they could not see the then. Most of us at that point would probably give up. But Jesus did not. Verse 12, afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. 
Luke's record of this account says that they are on the Emmaus Road. And there's a whole story that goes along with that, a whole lot more than these verses portray. But it's pretty incredible. The man comes up alongside of them. And that man is Jesus. They don't recognize him because they're blinded at this point. They're in the despair. In fact, in Luke's account, it literally talks about how they have long, sad faces. The man comes up to him and says, Hey, why are you so sad? And they look at one another and they look at this man. And they say, Well, haven't you heard what they did to Jesus? And they begin to talk and they tell the story. They were living in the now of the crucifixion rather than understanding that God has the future of the then. And in Luke's account, when they begin to eat a meal together, their eyes are opened and they realize it was Jesus who was walking with them all the time. And I would imagine at that point when they had an encounter with the living Christ, the sadness of their life was turned to joy. Hear that. You have sadness in your life, it can be turned to joy when you have an encounter with the living Christ. And that's what he wants to do for each one of us. So don't get caught up in the now of your circumstances, the time of life when things are not complete and all you can see is the partial picture. It does get scary. Don't take things into your own hands. We've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in relationships. I've seen it happen in marriage. And so they're not happy in a marriage relationship, and so they make, the change, uh, they, they make a change in hopes that tomorrow will be better. And rather than changing their circumstances, or the, changing themselves, they try to change their circumstances and they change spouses. But when they get into a new relationship, guess what? The same frustration that they had in the previous relationship often follows them to the second relationship. And the reason being is because the problem was not the relationship, the problem was self. Because they had tried to fit the wrong pieces into the puzzle of life. And today, if you, whatever situation it may be, if you're trying to do it in your own strength, your own way, living in the now, it's not going to work. You have to keep your mind upon the then, where you will begin to see everything complete. Tuesday, we went to Branson, took a group, our joy group, our senior adults to Branson, had a great time. I called mom and dad a few weeks ago, and I said, hey, how about I give you an early Christmas gift? You never know what to get your folks for Christmas. They said, let me take you to Branson with the group. And so they were all for that. And so... uh, they drove over Tuesday morning, went to Branson with us, and um, had a great time having my folks. That evening, um, they decided to spend the night with us. Mom was pretty tired, and they, although it's not that far over west of Pittsburgh, but they decided to spend the night. I think they just wanted to be with us, and it was great to have them. The next morning, we uh, decided to go out for breakfast, so we went to Iggy's to breakfast, and I know most of the waitresses there, and uh, one of my favorite ones uh, waited on us there, and I said, Brittany, this is my mom and dad, and introduced him to mom and dad, and and dad, he's quite a cut up, and he always has a story to tell, and a joke to tell, and he told her a story, told her a joke, and and then something was said about how long they'd been married, and mom and dad have been married 58 and a half years. Pretty incredible, isn't it? And uh, Brittany looked at mom, and she said, I bet there were many times you wanted to wring his neck over those 58 and a half years. (laughs) And folks, uh, let me just tell you, I'm sure there were many a time. But here's my mom's response. She said, I'm sure glad I didn't, because I don't know what I would do today without him. See, my dad is pretty much the main caretaker of my mother, physically. And when I heard her say that, I didn't comment, but man, it sunk deep into my heart. Because I'm sure there were times when living in the now of the circumstances they didn't quite understand. And I'm sure there were times when they wanted to throw in the towel and wanted things to be different. But I'm so thankful that they kept their eyes up on the then because they are reaping the rewards today. And when we think about this for our own lives, We begin to see things with more clarity. Let's talk about work. Let's talk about school. It's not easy. 
You're going to go through hard times. You're not going to understand why this, the difficulty of this day has come your way. And it, you're going to be tempted to throw in the towel. Students, you're going to be tempted to throw in the towel, especially when you get into college. You say, is this major worth it? Don't throw in the towel. Folks, at work, there's going to be difficult days. You're not going to understand. Some of the pieces are not going to seem like they fit. Don't throw in the towel. Keep the then in mind when it is complete. And families, no matter what crisis you are going through, we've all been there. We cannot focus upon the now. We have to keep the then in mind. And the disciples, right here in the Scripture, they begin to understand the completeness as they had another encounter with Christ. Verse 12, verse 14, later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. I thought, Jesus is my kind of guy. They ate together a lot of times there. And they encountered the living Christ. But the scripture says that he looked at them in some pretty strong words. He rebuked them the eleven disciples, because they had not believed, unbelief in their life, he rebuked them for their lack of faith. And then listen to these words, and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Jesus is like, why didn't you believe? They told about my resurrection. I'm alive. Why didn't you believe? The stubborn refusal. Did you catch those words? The stubborn refusal to believe. And I wonder how many times do we fail to experience the living Christ because we have stubborn refusal in our life. Really. I mean, we're just stubborn. Have you ever known anyone who's been stubborn? Sometimes it's been the person looking back at you in the mirror. I've known stubborn people. If I put pictures of stubborn people up on the wall, um, I probably would get in trouble today. Because it might be some of you, and you'd have to put my picture up as well. We've been stubborn. And out of that stubbornness, trying to live in the now, we have failed to see the then. God has a greater plan for your life, a greater plan for me. We need to live keeping the then in mind. Jesus rebuked the disciples because they had refused to believe. In studying this passage of Scripture, I came across an incredible quote. Here's what one commentator said on this verse. It says, It almost appears that the disciples, in their stubbornness of sorrow, listen to this, actually preferred unbelief and despondency to God's joyous truth of resurrection. I had to read that again. Actually preferred unbelief and despondency to God's truth? And then I realized that's what happens when I live in the now of stubbornness. In the now of the situation that I'm going through, sometimes we would rather stay where it's familiar where I feel like I have more control when I can do things the way I want to do them rather than God's way. And it was stubborn refusal that kept the disciples from experiencing all that God had in store and to make sense out of life's puzzle pieces. It was stubborn refusal. And I wonder, family, if the Holy Spirit wants to speak to your life just as He's been speaking to my life, not to allow any stubbornness to hold you back from experiencing all that God has in store. And I believe, as we learn from this Scripture today, that when Jesus shows up, the light begins to turn on, and when we experience the living Christ, and God is here today, He wants to pour into your life. He wants you to have a fresh and filling of the Spirit of God in your life for you to experience Him in a brand new way. And rather than trying to make pieces out of life's puzzles and forcing it to fit your plan, God wants you to follow His plan to live now, keeping the then in mind. And that's when the disciples begin to experience the resurrected Christ. 
And God wants us to do the same. Jesus showed up, and they experienced Him. I want to share three simple thoughts of how we experience Him. How do we live now trusting God for the then? The first truth is this. Live now keeping then in mind. You keep your eyes upon the top of the box, upon Jesus. Lots of pieces. Don't know how it all works, but if you keep your eyes upon Jesus, it's going to work out. You live now keeping the then in mind. And so the top of the box, Jesus is going to remove many of your frustrations because you can see the picture clearly. You live life keeping the then in mind. The second thought is this. In the doubts of today, you trust Him for His tomorrows. There's going to be times when we don't understand God's plan today, but when we keep our mind upon the then, then we begin to see that all plans work together for good. That God has great plans for us not to harm us, but to give us a bright hope and a bright future. If you'll trust in God's tomorrow, a better tomorrow than today. Now we see in part the puzzle pieces, but then we will see complete. And God wants us to see complete. And the third truth is this. We're to go with God's call. Verse 15, Jesus left the disciples with this call. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will not be saved. They will be condemned. And Jesus even though they had unbelief in their life, even though they couldn't quite make sense of it, he said to them, go. Go. Oftentimes I say, ready, set, go. We don't see that here. Jesus didn't say, get everything ready. Just go ahead and get things ready. Keep getting things ready. Too many times we in the church, we do that. Let's just keep getting things ready. Ready, 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 ready. ready. Let's get things set. Man, let's just get everything into place. Set. Set. Too many times we just sit way too long. And Jesus simply said, go. And when we go, every time you've seen it, I've seen it. When you go to make a difference in someone's life, oftentimes you receive more than what you've contributed. Jesus says to go and preach the good news. And I believe as we enter into a great season ahead of us, you're going to have opportunity to go. And when you go, that fear is going to be replaced with action. That unbelief is going to be replaced with belief. You're able to live life with great faith in Christ. Knowing that the then is the goal. Not the now. We live life now with the then we're going to close our service today with a great baptism. I think we have three or four bab- going to be baptized today. And I'd like for them to get things ready, and, um, and we'll just prepare for that. We're going to sing a song here in a moment. But before we do all of that, I just ask you, would you have a little business with the Lord just between you and God today? And Just close your eyes and bow your heads and, and just say, Okay, God, is there anything keeping me from experiencing the then in my life? Is there anything that I'm living the now in, trying to fit the puzzle pieces my own way? Maybe trying to place the wrong puzzle pieces into my life? If there is, would you confess it to the Lord? And to allow a testimony to ring forth of the old being gone so that the new can come? Maybe there's some of you today that you've heard the news of people experiencing Christ but you've not experienced Him on your own. I mean, for yourself. And today, Jesus is knocking on your heart's door saying, this is the day for you to experience Me. Would you just experience the living Christ today? Maybe there's some that you need to confess stubborn refusal, stubborn unbelief to the Lord. Say, God, forgive me for being so stubborn. Forgive me of doing it on my own. It's time to surrender control of my life to Jesus Christ and allow Him to do something brand new. If that's been your prayer today, God will do that. For others, you need to answer the call to go. There's loved ones that will sit at the dinner table with you on Thursday or Friday that need Jesus and God has called you to go.
preach the good news, to love them into the kingdom of God. And when that happens, that unbelief, even in your own life, will be overcome with belief. You're able to live life by faith. I'd like you to stand with me. and We're going to sing a great song. We'll prepare for the baptism. But it's still time to do business with the Lord. And so would you just experience Jesus Christ today? Some of you may want to kneel at the altar. It would be a great place to kneel. Maybe some of you want to reach over and take someone by the hand. However it may be, would you respond to God's call today? Would you today quit trying to live life with the pieces? But would you keep your eyes upon the goal? Father, we thank you for this time. We want to open up our heart and our mind. We want to experience you. We love you so much, and we give you praise. Amen.